This is a video example for how to apply Gauss's law to find the electric field in uh, cases of a simple or symmetrical charge distribution and highly symmetric geometry. So what we have is a charged sphere. The sphere is an insulating sphere. It's important to know it's not a conductor. It's an insulating sphere of radius A and total charge Q. So we put Q onto the sphere somehow. And we want to know the electric field <clears throat> due to this charge, uh, due to this charged sphere in all points in space. So we have to, first of all, divide our space into two regions. So outside the sphere, I'm going to call region 1. Inside the sphere, I will call region 2. And I'm interested in knowing what the electric field is outside and inside. So I'll do outside first. First thing I need to do as a preliminary step, I'm going to determine the volume charge density of this object, which is very simple. The volume charge density, which we indicate by rho, is just equal to the amount of charge on the object divided by the volume of the char or the volume which the charge occupies. In this case, we have a sphere. The volume is four thirds pi r cubed. R in this case will be a, the radius of the sphere. So what I get is that the volume charge density is equal to q over over four thirds pi a cubed. That's going to come in handy later. You don't always have to go through this step. But it, if it's possible to calculate it, if you're not dealing with an infinite geometry, then it's a handy step to do first. So now, to actually form the, uh, to, to determine the electric field, I'm first going to draw a Gaussian sphere in the region in which I'm interested, which is region 1, outside the volume of the sphere. So that will look like something like this. Fill in the gaps here. So I've just drawn a sphere, and that's clearly not a perfect sphere. Use your imagination. So I've drawn a Gaussian sphere outside of this. Uh, I've made sure that my radius, which I'll draw in here, my radius r, uh, is uh, I've made sure that my Gaussian sphere is co-central with my spherical object, so that along the surface of my Gaussian sphere, every point is the same distance away from the surface of my charged sphere, which is important because it means that the electric field is is a is constant in magnitude uh, at every point there. So the next thing to do is actually write down Gauss's law, which looks like this. The integral of the electric field dot dA uh, is equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, right? In this case, that's pretty trivial. Uh, my electric field is constant, so it can come outside of the integral, uh, which leads to the integral of dA, which is just the area of my Gaussian sphere, and that is the area of the Gaussian sphere. The black dotted line is the area that I'm looking at here, not the area of the charged object. That's my Gaussian area. And that's equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. Well, in region 1, Q enclosed is just uh, the, in the entire charge Q. <clears throat> so let me go up to the top here. I'm running out of room. What that looks like is E, let me just write the intermediate step, on the integral of dA is equal to Q over epsilon naught, right? And of course the integral of dA is just uh, 4 pi r squared, and that is r this time because it's my Gaussian radius. So I get e onto 4 pi r squared is equal to q over epsilon naught. Alright, I'm going to go to a new slide to get some new room and rewrite this, rewrite this expression. e onto 4 pi r squared is equal to q over epsilon naught, right? Uh, and so I'm just going to, to determine the E field, just divide through by the area, and I get E is equal to q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared, which is the same thing, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, we define as k, our Coulomb constant, is k times q over r squared, which is the same electric field we would expect from a point charge of magnitude q located at the center of that sphere. So let me reiterate, as long as you're outside the sphere, the entire thing looks to you like a point charge located at the origin, as long as your origin is, is lined up with the center of that sphere. Okay? <clears throat> now, let me go back to our, char our, our situation here. I'm going to erase 
all the stuff that's cluttering up my drawing. And we're going to solve it, this system in region 2. Region 1 is pretty trivial. System 2 is not terrible, but it is a little bit more complex. All right. So I have here my charge density and I have my charge sphere. So now to determine the region 2, I've got to draw a Gaussian sphere in region 2. So I'm going to draw a Gaussian sphere that looks something like this. Again, it's not a sphere. It's supposed to be, but I can't draw very well, especially now that I'm on an iPad. Just use your imagination. I've got a Gaussian sphere that's inside this object. Again, a radius of R. Right? R is the radius of my Gaussian sphere. Now I'm going to go through the same process. <coughs> and I'm going to form E dot DA, which is my electric flux. I'm going to integrate that. And that's equal to Q enclosed. It's Q enclosed by my Gaussian sphere over epsilon naught. Right? And the same principle is going to follow. The electric field is constant in direction, or sorry, constant in magnitude along every surface, of, every point of the surface of my Gaussian sphere. The E field can come out of the integral. The dA is going to work out to be just the area of my Gaussian sphere, which will look exactly the same as it did before, and that's going to be equal to Q enclosed over epsilon naught. So if you have that in your mind, let me go to the next slide. So all of these steps are basically the same with one exception. Let me erase this. This is no longer big Q. And let me erase all of this. This is now Q enclosed. Notice, and forgive the handwriting, but notice I have not enclosed the entire charge Q. I've only enclosed part of it. So I need to figure out how much of that charge I've enclosed. That is where my volume charge density comes in handy. So let me just go down here and show you how to determine that. So Q enclosed is going to be equal to my volume charge density times whatever volume I'm enclosing. In this case, that's 4 thirds pi R cubed, right? R is again the radius of my Gaussian sphere. Rho times 4 thirds pi R cubed. Uh, that is the charge which I'm enclosing. <coughs> I determined rho earlier, let me go back a slide, to be Q over 4 thirds pi A cubed. Right? So I have Q over, and I'm going to run out of room, bear with me, 4 thirds pi A cubed. That is my rho times 4 thirds pi A r cubed, right? Uh, so obviously my four thirds are going to go away. I'm going to lose a pi and I get out of this that, that is q times r cubed over a cubed. Right? That's not a nine cubed. Let me make that clear. It's not a nine cubed. That's an a cubed. Alright, so that is my q enclosed. I can go back up to this expression here and plug in my q enclosed which is q r cubed over a cubed and hopefully you see what's going to happen the r squared on the bottom will cancel with two of these guys the a cubed will go down to my denominator I'm again going to substitute 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught for k and that entire thing is equal to q r I have one r remaining there's a k here um, over a cubed. And as we discussed in class, this is a linear expression. What this tells you is that the electric field uh, changes linearly as you move from the center of your charged object to the surface of that charged object. Uh, after that, it, it follows, when you get outside of the charged object, it, it goes as 1 over r squared, like we're used to seeing the electric field doing. But inside, it's actually increasing linearly from the center to the surface. So this is my E field now in region 2. Right, before it was region 1. This is inside the sphere for region 2.